Boston Bros is number one thing not. You're dead wrong. You can catch me doing Miss McCain with my prodders on. It's real boxing talk every time we meet with Ned, the TBE, and Conspiracy G. We bring it to you raw, on bias. You know the deal. You can even get a poor dealie here from Dollar Bill with my guys by my side. You know we going live. All we need you to do is please like and subscribe. Boxing Bros. Peace. All right, back from the last topic, uh, we are going to discuss Deontay Wilder's response to uh, Mark Brillen's interview. Now, of course, after the great work done by Tunde Ajayi and um, Spence Fearon, Deontay Wilder went to his media puppet, um, respectfully, you know, what I mean is he <laughs> went to 78 Sports, you know what I'm saying? And you can catch this interview uh, with Deontay Wilder at 78 Sports, uh, basically Wilder said that uh, Mark Brillen is jealous. He said that Mark Brillen spiked his water. He stands by that. He said that, uh, you know, his Mark Brillen's energy was off. And going into the Tyson Fury first fight, his energy was off. And going into the second fight, his energy was off. He says that people could sense it. He's an energy kind of guy, and Mark Brillen had bad energy. He said he can't believe Mark Brillen would say this stuff about him. He's been around his daughter. He's been around his family. He said he's kind of hurt by Mark Brillen's co uh, comments. He said Mark <laughs> Brillen is a B. Nah, bro. All love, though. <laughs> All respectfully. Right. Well, respectfully. Okay. <laughs> I was like, come on, bro. So, uh, with that being said, I mean, you could go to 78 Sports to check out uh, that interview. Um, these are exclusives, so I don't want to play it. I just want you to go there to check them out because they're exclusive. So, I want you to hear everything by going to them. Um, Trill Dollar Bill, what's your uh, reaction to that? He's bugging. He's big bugging. 100% bugging. I don't, you know what I'm saying? Listen, this is the commission speaking. And I think that... Um, Evaluation <laughs> is in order, fam. You don't remember how you drag. I was saying this to you. We were saying this to you on, on when you went to go drag this man, this brother named through the dirt. I was like, how you gonna do this to this man? This kid been around your family. You've been around his family. He knows you. How you gonna say all this stuff about this man? How you going? On this man, and then you got the audacity, the nerve. They be like, I can't, I don't believe how he can say this about me. <laughs> no. You went crazy. You had thousands of wild deaths sending messages to him, threats, and all that, because you jumped out the window on this guy and you got the nerve to be like, I don't understand. Yo, fam, yo. All right, Kanan said it in the last one. Yo, you're starting, like, you see the, I can, I can <laughs> so the smell punk it. In him. I see the punk in him. That's what I said. I, I can yeah. smell the punk in you, bro. Like, <laughs> you know why? Because you did stuff like that. You're going to go and call this man in front of the world and going to say, and you said he cheated you. You said this man cheated you, and then you discredit this man, threw him under the bus. A lot of people who were just, you know, casuals who didn't know who Mark Breland was, you know what I'm saying? They they roll with you. Jealous of what? Jealous of what? He has accomplished more in this sport of boxing than you have. Jealous of what? A fraud? <laughs> his energy was off? Of course his energy was off. He didn't think you could win. <laughs> his baby was going to get beat up. He loved you. Exactly. <laughs> he loved you. Of course his energy was off. He didn't want to see you get hurt. My energy's gonna be off with my loved one. I think my loved one's gonna get her. I don't know, man. I'm I'm gonna be like, I don't know, man. You know, hey, I'm riding with you, man. But hey, man, I don't know, man. You know what I'm saying? That's how he was feeling. I'm with him. It's been plenty of time. My man said, "Hey, Trill, this is a, this was one on one. No jumping in. I know how you get. Nigga, I'm yeah, I know, man, but." <laughs> 
Who a Mark? Mark, that second fight, Mark felt like how when you seen your man get beat up and you know it's a one-on-one -on -one fight. But you're like, nah, my man, I'm jumping in anyway because my man's getting up here. You know what I'm saying? I deal with it later. Y'all jumped him. I'll deal with it later. That's what Mark was doing. Mark was a real one. And you jumped in on him. He tried to save your life. Don't that complex was just bugging last episode, but we all seen what was happening in that corner. <laughs> when Tyson Fury was doing the Wilder. I go back now and I watch that and I'm like, yo, salute to Mark Breland for having that love and compassion for him to save him from himself. Yeah, Wilder, I said, yeah, you was a dog, right? Because you wanted to go out on your shield. I, I gave you that credit at the end of that fight. But everything that you did after that fight, the excuses, the glove games, you 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 crapping on Kenny Bayless and you 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 crapping on um 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 uh, uh, the brother uh, Mark on his black power crap, but you holding JDs on your shoulder when he was in the room where these guys was doing the wrapping of your hands, smiling and bobbing to the music. But these brothers was the ones that was foul. Then Mark Breeley's energy was off. My energy will be off too. He, like you said, he's been around you. He got love for you. Been around your kids. He don't want their daddy to be dead. So, of course, his energy was going to be off. This is the fight business. We've been playing with you this whole time. <laughs> we was Rocky three in it the whole time. <laughs> Putting you in there with people so you can win. You got in there with Mr. T. That's Tyson Fury. <laughs> <laughs> a real fighter, and you got exposed. You had to go look back at Mark and be like, hey, so I was, these was really, uh, these cruiserweights that y'all was putting me in here with. <laughs> <laughs> these <laughs> 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 No, I'm just, yo, I'm just appalled. You know what I'm saying? I'm just appalled at his beliefs that he thought that Mark Breeland would did him foul. Like he didn't, he forgot everything. He's the victim. He He's the victim, bro. He's the victim. <laughs> like he forgot. You know what I'm saying? Before you had all this money and all this, it was just, this man was riding with you. He sees something there. He's been around you. Yo, if his course, his energy was off these two fights, because you was really in there with a real fight at this time. And he was really concerned for your safety, like a father figure should be, or a big brother would be. That's love. You just, you crapped on the man for having love for you. And all the other people that didn't have love for you was laughing and joking. And you know, there's nothing on that side, nothing over there. I don't know, man. I just thought, I don't, I don't hold this, this to, to Wilder. I think this is what happened. Wilder heard that and he just went out off of emotion. He didn't sit back and he didn't think. Like, you know what, Dan? He should have been like, you got that. You got that, MB. You got that. Because, you know, I jumped out the window on you. You know what I'm saying? And you've been through this and we've been through so much together and I did that to you, man. You got that. A real one would have did that. I would have felt bad. Like, you know what? I was wrong the first one, man. I understand, man. Like, look, you got me, man. It's over. You good. You know what I'm saying? You got that, man. Because everybody, can, nobody can sit here and say that you was you was right, bro. You got to take that on the chin, bro. You got to take that on the chin. Whatever monster, you got to take that on the chin. This man is still a man at the end of the day. And he still feel like he can kick you. <laughs> <laughs> but Mark Rill is still a man at the end of the day and you crapped on this man's whole legacy and everything and people had people coming at this man and now this man is firing back you gotta take that that's all I feel about that you gotta take that Wilder and you was bug you you, you you big bugging that's all I feel I'm not that's just being real that's not that's just you know what I'm saying on some man to man you know what I'm saying that's taking the sports and perception out of it you know what I'm saying that's just my perception of how I would handle it as a man. You know what I'm saying? He's wild. I got you. I got you. I.
Slippery G. Yeah, um, I like to say uh, salute to, to, to Stamina for Sale and 78 Sports for both Gandhi's exclusives. You know, um, and in the last uh, segment, I was talking about how uh, Mark's statements got me a little nervous. I'm going to be honest. The 78 interview got me like, damn, son. I hope I didn't invest in the wrong horse. You know what I'm saying? Because <laughs> I have to be honest. This is me. And I'm not. Yeah, I know Ned thinking, yo, this is Flip Flop G. It's not Flip Flop G. <laughs> I'm the type. It's like, yo, the real test is after you take a loss and if you can learn from the loss. But that interview proved to me that Deontay Wilder suffers from uh, uh, what's that thing called? Accountability. Uh, no. Wilder <laughs> <laughs> suffering from delusions of grandeur. All right. And so, and the reason why I say this is because during that interview, he was still calling himself a king. And I'm like, what? I'm like, bro, like you just lost your title and everything, like. You know, but then I was like, yo, you know, maybe he needs to think like that. But then when he was talking about Mark, he was just like, yo, I believe in my heart of hearts that Mike spiked my water. No evidence, though. He was just like, yo, he just seemed off. I'm like, bro, that's not evidence, man. You know what I mean? So I'm like, damn, is he like, in his mind, he probably is thinking, I did not lose. They cheated me, right? And so if you think like that, then you're going to think, I don't need to make any improvements. His only improvement was I need to get Mark off out the camp. And that's where I'm like, oh man, yo, wow. Bring him the lead. <laughs> Please, yo. Like and, and that's another thing. You definitely shouldn't be in this sport if you think that you don't have to fix nothing. Yeah, that that you ever have, think you ever have to work on nothing, then this is definitely not the sport for you, bro. Yeah. And then you know what's crazy though? Because I remember like like when he first came back from his hiatus of not interviewing and all that stuff. Wilder said, when he was talking about Mark Brilliant, he was like, yo, Mark Brilliant just shows up for the last like two weeks of training camp anyways, right? And so when Mark was like, yo, Wilder doesn't listen, right? Like when he was like, you know, um, about the jab during the um, Stamina for Sale interview, he was like, oh, Wilder just doesn't listen, right? And hearing how Wilder was talking about Mark, I was like, man, they should have part ways a long time ago. You know what I mean? And so when I hear both sides, it, it seems like these dudes try to stay loyal to each other because they both got to the mountaintop together, right? But sometimes, man, you just got to part ways, you know? And um, let's just say, I do believe Mark was probably like, damn, Wilder's going to lose. Like, I, this is because he was like, yo, Wilder's like, yo, he was just acting off the whole time. That third. I have to agree with Trip. He was thinking, yo, you're about to get body bagged, right? And so he's going into this fight. Wilder probably thought the same thing when you think about it because I'm still trying to understand why did Wilder arrive in that ring sweating like that, you know, legs was gone, all kind of stuff. You know what I mean? So it's like maybe it was just the, the moment itself. Wilder just couldn't handle it. And Mark really knew that, right? And so now Wilder's like, damn, I just got embarrassed. This dude doing a towel. I'd rather die in the ring. How dare he? You know what? I didn't lose. Mark cheated. You know what I'm saying? And so... To me, that's just delusion of grandeur right there. And so I hope, I really, really, really do hope that Wilder gets some type of counseling, some type of uh, advice, some type of, Al need to call him and Al need to be like, yo, listen here, bro. Fear is going to put you in a, in a box, you know what I'm saying, if they didn't throw in that towel. Bro, get back to training. I'll, I'll, I'll vest and get you the best trainers I could get you. But, bro, I need you to take this serious. Because maybe it's just... After a while, Wilder just didn't listen to Mark. You know what I'm saying? They're just two different type of dudes where Wilder's just like, yo, I, I don't respect you no more, right, as a trainer, you know? And so maybe Wilder just needs a new look. I, again, I don't know if Malik Scott is that new look. But, hey, it is what it is. I'm just saying, Wilder, bro, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm disappointed in that interview, more so than what Mark was saying. Because what Mark was saying was like, damn, you really not training? But hearing Wilder say, Yo, I'm the king. It cheated me. Da, da, da. That just tells me that you're not taking that loss the way I think you should take it. But then again, hey, who am I? I'm just a wild fan. But not not even that, G. Not even that, G. You're more than that. You know what I'm saying? But you're more than just a wild fan. Um, 
which I think is rare. I wouldn't call you a flip flop, but I, I always say this on, on the show, like I told people before, when G's is 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 special, you know what I'm saying? If he realizes something, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know what I'm saying? You 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 salute to people like that. You know what I'm saying? If they realize something, they have the mind to say, Hey, I was wrong at this one. You know what I'm saying? And I get it now. And I think that's that's a great attribute that you have. The thing with Wilder is, is it's 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 funny and it's upsetting, yo. It really is. It really is. It's, it's upsetting with Wilder, yo. It, it really is, man. That's all I gotta say. It's really upsetting. Before, like, for him to Mark, I right, this is what I was gonna say. I didn't want to say it, but this is what I want to say. To your argument, right? This is what happened with champs, and maybe this is a little bit of Mark Breland's fault, right? Y'all put him in there with these soft guys. Y'all see him, like Mark Breland said, he had one good fight, and it's the, probably the fight that I'm alluding to, and that was the fight where he won the title. Nah. You know what I'm saying? That's nah. probably what he had talking about, but I'm just, that's yeah. Ortiz. That was it. He literally said that was it. And I don't even think that that was as, to me, was when he won, first won the title. That was the best I've seen of a Wilder, right? And then I've seen him to go down with, you know why? Because the people that they put him in there with, they put him in there with people that he was going to knock out. So you started making him think that he didn't have to do certain things. Like he started saying in interviews, these guys got to be, I only got to be good for two seconds. You know what I'm saying? To be guys that giving him constructive criticism, he'd be like, "Hey, don't judge me, love me." Don't judge your king. You know, what I mean? <laughs> for real, he did it, and his team made him believe this stuff. So they maybe contribute to uh, that case of being delusional. You know what I'm saying? So I could definitely walk with you on that. All right, Ned. <clears throat> All right, Trills, I agree with you 100% to the part you said. G, yeah, I agree. G, she's... G a flip-flop. I agree with you. G a flip-flop. G ahead. gets it. <laughs> he, I call it... He said, while is a uh, delusional of grandeur, G is a ira irrational, irrational. G needs <laughs> the car crashing, but he's not going to press the brake. <laughs> he's not gonna get up. He's not gonna stop the car. Exactly. That's why he's a flip flopper. Yes. That's why he's a flip he's not flopper. Stop. I, I'm saying about oh, yeah, yeah, other topics. I said like G can admit where he's wrong. Yeah, you know he saying? comes on the he's show and he admits. Where he's no, this not. That's that's great about G. This is what makes G a flip flopper. Yeah. He will go G's all in, all in, except one chip on Seth Mitchell. Right. Yes. As soon as Seth loses, he takes that chip, put it in on Wilder. He collects more chips. Then he goes all in except one chip on Wilder. Right now, as soon as like, I'm at Stavern, right? Stavern loses the Wilder. Now he takes that one chip. He put it in on Wilder. You know what I'm saying? He yeah. never, he never like, you know yeah. what I'm saying? He's, he's, he's never going to go all in. Yeah. That's what you say. Well, he's never going to go all in. Hey, hey that's that's I went all in for Wilder. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> I'm going all in. You ain't going all in on Wilder. We see your foot out the door. You're still human. You know <laughs> we see your foot out the door. Every day we see your foot out the door, man. You don't just like G. Just G did the same thing. He put most of his chips. He went all in on um, Anthony Durrell, except one chip to beat Benavidez. Now Benavidez beat Durrell. G nah, nah, hold on. Time out. Nah, nah. Benavidez. I, 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 <laughs> nah, oh. I was all in on David Benavidez in that fight too. I knew Darrell. Oh, you like, picked Darrell, bro. Yeah, he picked. You picked Darrell. Yo, you picked Darrell, bro. You was like, I gotta pick him, bro. I gotta pick him. Look at you. Look at you. Yo, I think you why I said that. Y'all, y'all are funny, uh, bro. Yo, you yeah. picked Darrell. Oh, you, you gave a good. You gave a good argument too. after the air. You know why? You gave a good that. argument too. <laughs> I know. He made an argument and everything. You picked Darrell. You yeah, picked around, yeah, bro. I'm gonna fall back for that. Shame on you, dog. That's yeah. what, shame that's, on you. That's that's, that's why we call shame on you. G. Right, shame go. on you, G. On you know your you know your politics, and now you want to act like you don't believe in them. So shame <laughs> on you. G, All right. G favors PBC fighters. <laughs> <laughs> that too. <laughs> so. 
Wilder, I don't get how can you feel play the victim after what you've done? All the pain and the, all the slander you've caused and all, all that you've done to a man that did nothing to you and you claim these type of you're, you're, you're claiming these uh, glove gate, uh, your water being poisoned, things of that nature. Uh, uh, you call them a snake. You, you slam this man's character and then you expect him to have any love for you after that? Like, you expect him to be like, oh, why is still a great guy? No, what you did was wrong and this is what you get back. You get it back two times forward. He's going to expose your flaws. He's gonna. It's like me. I'm out here parading like I'm the best and then I dis I dis I just K and I just G I just trail and then they be like oh net the TVE all he did was push record on Sundays you know what you know what that gonna make me look like a one put a one 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 trick pony a one trick pony and that's all you are and that's all Mark Brilliant showed you as was a one trick pony bro nah, so don't I gotta I gotta you see that that analogy that you use. It, it kind of sparked some of me. I do have an issue with what Mark was saying. Now I think about it. Because oh. walk with me on this. Walk with me on this. I'm not walking. No, I'm going to listen, but I'm not listening. walking. Just, just listen. Stay where you I'm, at. I'm, I'm going to try to walk with you, but if you Thank mess you. up, I'm leaving. All right. All right. Go ahead. This is the reason why I'm like, I had issues with it is because you've been with Wilder for years. And now that y'all part ways, now you're like, yo, he was carefully matched. He can't learn anything, this, that, and the third. I'm like, yo, if you knew that, why'd you stay in the camp? You see what I'm saying? So then now, but now, while the kid feed off of that, you can sense when a person's not feeling you, right? So you know when a person's like, damn, this dude's a dummy, son. Or, all right, Wilder, what you want me to do? Just to hold a miss for you again? Okay, one, two, one, two. Okay, more one, two. All right, yo, am I getting my check now? Can I leave? So Wilder could probably sense that, like, yo, this dude's not invested in my career. You know, so to me, they should have parted ways a long time ago. You staying around for all of those years, to me, you're at fault, right? Mm -hmm. So if, and that's why when you use that whole analogy about you just pressing record, I don't see you as just a person that presses record. Yeah, I agree. When I say that, then it's like, yo, so why'd I have him around for so long? You see what I'm saying? Like, so to me, that's why I'm like, yo, I, when I think about it, I don't like what Mark was saying now because it's like, I want to do that to y'all. You get what I'm saying? Because once I do that, then it's like, yo, bro, then what were you doing around these dudes? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, that is, I don't know. That's not loyalty at all, bro. That's all I'm saying, but it is what it is. I, 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 what, I, but wait, what can, you, what can you tell a know-it-all? What can you tell a know-it-all? You see, the problem is, like, I've been, I've, been, I've been in situations. I've been in situations with family members where I've given them the appropriate advice, and they tell me I know already. Mm -hmm. I give them the appropriate, they tell me I know already. Then when I don't tell them anything, and they mess up, they say, well, how come you never helped me? Well, every time I give you the appropriate advice, you tell me you know already. So now I don't say anything to you, and then you mess up, then you say, why don't I help you? You see what I'm saying? So it's very difficult when you're dealing with someone who, when you give them advice, they tell you they know already or they don't take it. And then the only time they want your advice is when they F up. And that's when your advice is going to be valuable. Every other time that I give you advice, you either tell me you know or you disagree and you don't listen. The one time I don't give you advice, now it mattered. Exactly. And the love, and it's different too. Not saying that, it's a loyalty and love thing also. Mm -hmm. Like you're with somebody, you know what I'm saying? And like you said, Wilder was carefully matched. Like mm -hmm. he didn't, he didn't, you know what I'm saying? He's basically say, he's telling what we all knew. The artist proved that. It's not like this was, you know what I'm saying? Like, this is not proven records. This is what people were saying. It's like somebody calling somebody a snitch and it, it's like, I would call me a snitch when it's proven record. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. like this is, you. we seen who he was mashed up against. You know what I'm saying? You see, this was, this is not a diss. This is a person just telling the truth. And, and when he was saying like, he was in a, he already said, wow, the win. Listen, and this is what happens when you become champion. You start winning. And I said that Mark Breland was probably at fault at this, too. You know why? Because, like, you you, you start wanting to help a person's confidence. You know what I'm saying? And then it got to a point where a person can believe it. A person start believing. Like, you start telling somebody, like, oh, you the man, you the man. And then the person start yeah. believing and start believing that they don't need you. Or they're bigger than the training or something like that. That's why I was saying, like, in that aspect, 
You know what I'm saying? Yeah, if you're not leaving, oh, if all right. you're not leaving, to be like, yo, bro, you're not a king fan. Hey, this is a real fight right here. You need to take this serious. You need to take training camp serious. You need to start let, running. You start hitting. That job, you know, you know, we don't went from just being three people in the gym. Now Wilder got 300 people in the gym now. This is different energy now. And you're not listening. all of them lunch, too. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? And this is different. You're paying all these people to tell you yes, yes, yes. You're not listening to the guy who's telling you, yo, we got to stay on these jabs for a little bit long. I'm good. I don't need those jabs. You know what I'm saying? The people he, love me. Yo, <laughs> yo, Mark, okay. Breland, Mark Breland hey. is, is, is step, okay. he's, he's default. He's my loyalty <laughs> by default. You know what I'm saying? Because he wanted to stick with this kid that he's been with, that he had love for, that he's been around his family, he's been with his kids. Yes. He didn't want to jump ship and not be a familiar face because yes. he felt like this kid might need him. But this kid turned around and became the snake that he said that Thank he you. was. Thank you know you. what I'm saying? Mark Brillen was not this, disloyal. This is what happens. Mark Brillen looked like, I know, this is what happened eventually. Now, hold on a second. Happened. Yo, yo Nate, you got something you want to say, bro? No, nah, no, nah, I said Mark Brillen was not disloyal first. It was Wilder who came out was like, he was the disloyal trainer. Mark, Wilder was the one who was like, I'm um, ready to fire Mark, Mark Brillen. Wilder was the one, like, Mark Brillen literally saved the man's life from brain damage, from whatever, from mental, whatever, whatever trauma he could have gone through. In that fight, my broom threw in the towel because he saw where the fight was headed. He saved that man's life. And then this man turns around and calls him a disloyal trainer, a snake in the grass, the man that drugged him, the man that didn't want him to, be, win, want him to win, all of that. And now you're going to sit there and say, oh, if you knew all of that was in the camp, oh, why didn't you leave? No, it was not. It was never. So it, it looks like after this fight, after something, Wilder was going through something because it looks like what we see now from Wilder He's unstable. And it looks like Brillian was caring for this man. And Mark, um, and Wild didn't care at all. Why, at this point, why didn't understand what was going on? Why didn't care for it? Why, why didn't realize that Brillian really was like the guy in his corner? That So he fires him. He throws his, he throws his name through the mud, everything. And now once Brillian comes out, he wants to act like, how could he do this to me? What's, what's what's wrong with this man? He's a he's this, he's that. Like, nah, you you threw the stones. You did you do you did this to yourself, Wilder. So I'm not I'm not I'm not agreeing with anything you saying right now about Breland, because Breland did his part and Wilder turned around and stabbed that man in his back. <laughs> I that's closed. I right, complex. I know you've been waiting and it the floor is yours. No one's gonna cut you off. Do what you gotta do, brother. <laughs> Um, yeah, I've been just listening to you guys and you guys all make valid points. Uh, first off, like you guys said, shout out to Tunde and Spencer Farron for getting that interview and shout out to the mighty LDBC for getting Deontay Wilder to talk. No, I'm joking. Yeah, that's <laughs> how you feel. How you I just always, yeah, I just always rapping, rapping, he rapping the mighty set. LDBC, you know what I mean? He's rapping this set. No, that's rapping funny. That's set. Rapping this set. It's that's, cool. a, that's it's funny. Shout out to them. You are cousin, you know. You yo, I can, I, yo, I'm waiting for when we hit you up and you're like, yo, I signed to the LDBC. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna come out with the chain, the LDBC chain. Like <laughs> that was like, yo, it's cool. Yo, rep your set. You still our cousin. No, no, no. Um, um, look, yeah, a lot was said. I agree with a lot of it, honestly. Wilder, you can't be surprised when you you came out first and you threw Mark under the bus, right? It is what it is. So, like, to me, it's just ugly all around. And honestly, I think it's a very ugly chapter in boxing, and I kind of wish we close it and move on. Because, uh, and it's really Wilder's fault. It, you know, Doug, you come out with all these all the, um, allegations that you don't have a lot of proof of. And even even if it seems like you and Mark had beef for a while or not beef, but like this weird energy. Right. Doug, y'all should have moved on from a long time ago. And that's fine. I, I just you know, it is what it is. And sometimes people you stick with each other because you're familiar and it's been working and whatever. But like, honestly, Wilder probably could have benefited from trying a new trainer out. You know what I mean? I'm sure he's worked. He's he's gone to different camps, even when he was coming up and that, you know, I'm sure he's worked with different trainers but he probably could benefit from a new trainer, even right now, honestly, now that Mark is gone and Jay's still there and whatever, I think still try. There's other trainers out there. You know what I mean? Who might give you a new wrinkle to your game and show you different things or you, you might click better. 
sometimes it's relationships, you know. Um, but I'm not I'm not surprised at, at what Mark said in Wilder coming back is like not really a surprise either. You know what I mean? I get what he's coming from as well. Like, well, this dude is saying all this and that, you know, like he was in my camp and, you know, Wilder said something interesting. He's like, thank God I'm not going to die broke. And kind of like I've, I've been feeding this man and giving him money, which is kind of a point like it, in boxing, especially a lot of older fighters they don't they, they don't have a way of making income so especially when you're tied to a championship level fighter you get better paydays obviously so th there's been something in that relationship where you guys were symbiotic feeding off each other obviously uh mark was getting a pretty good payday and living pretty good for years now right and then you too were getting a good trainer but now that it's the relationship is done you know i i wish mark breland all the best i i hope mark breland doesn't die poor I don't know if that's what Wilder was insinuating, but I hope that uh, Mark Breland doesn't, you know, I hope Mark Breland lives an okay life for the rest of his life. And I hope Wilder lives the best. I just, I hate this like soap opera, you know, talking trash about each other. It's really ugly and it's unnecessary. Um, you know, we've seen trainers and fighters split in the past. Sometimes it's ugly, but like this going to each other, talking about each other in the media and stuff like that. It's just not a good look. Keep it to boxing. Let's keep it moving. Um, you know, I don't, I don't know what's going on in terms of next fights and stuff, but I would like to see a new fight come up. Um, it seems like the Fury fights not happen. I don't know. There's, they're supposed to be in this court case. I have no idea. But honestly, it's all building up so much. It's like starting to lose interest. It's like, just do something. Let's just see something. You know what I mean? Um, from, from anybody, everybody. You know what I mean? Uh, but anyways, this, this whole thing is real ugly. I, and, I, and it's Wilder's fault. I'll, I'll, I'll admit that. Wilder is doing wrong talking trash and doing all this stuff. It's just not right. Especially when you have no proof. I don't think Mark oh, time complex. You, you, I love you. I mean, I've, I've kept it. I've kept it <laughs> the same with, with Wilder the whole time with this. Does the glove gate thing to me until you have proof don't really matter. I, I, I don't, I, I, I still find it hard to believe anyways, but even without that, no proof. Then not even the 78 sports interview. He told us he has no proof. He just, I believe in my heart of hearts. Yeah. Like that's just, you know, and, and fine, if you don't if you don't just have that relationship with him as a trainer more, that's fine. But there's ways to do things like that. And and throwing him under the bus publicly and stuff is just unnecessary. It's just like carry yourself in a certain way. You know what I mean? It's like with a certain dignity, like, all right, cool, we're not done working anymore. I wish him the best of luck. He's on to other endeavors and I'm gonna do the same. End of story. But this all going back and forth, talking trash is just unnecessary. And if you consider yourself a king, it's beneath you, right? It is. As a championship level fighter, you you have a certain you know, gravitas to your word and it's underneath you to, to be kind of throwing this mudslinging stuff. So I would suggest to Deontay to move forward move on from this. Um, you focus on the future in your camp and whatever you're doing. And I think Breland kind of feels the same. Breland's like, you know what? I'm just over it. I don't care anymore. And I'm, I'm doing his own thing. So, you know, more power to both of them. Um, but I kind of wish we would all leave this in the past. This is really bad. Yeah, basically, I agree with Trill and Ned. Um, so the only thing I would add is that when it comes to this fight, well, when it comes to the interview, Mark Brillen said he could beat Anthony Joshua and he said he can beat Deontay Wilder. Never said he can beat Tyson Fury. He said Tyson Fury is a good fighter. So to me, that tells me he thinks that Tyson Fury is better than Anthony Joshua and Deontay Wilder. Malik Scott, his new head trainer fought, I mean, sparred Tyson Fury and got both of his eardrums busted when he sparred um, Tyson Fury. So like Trill said, which was the point I, I was going to make was, yeah, his energy's off. He knows you're going to get beat down. Like, dog, he knows you're going to get beat down. Of course his energy's off. This is the first time he's walking to the ring with you, and he knows in his heart that you are in trouble because you were matched easy uh, in the fights before. Also, uh -huh. look. Yeah, what you saying, bro? Go ahead. I was just saying, duh. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And another uh, thing that I think wasn't mentioned is how uh, Deontay Wilder clown Tyson Fury for switching trainers after the first fight. See, he learned from his mistake. He learned from his loss, said, I need to do things differently, switched his trainer. Wilder took it as a sign of weakness. Wilder's team took it as a sign of weakness. The Wild Dets were saying how this was an advantage for Wilder. I remember one of the idiot... Uh, LDBC dudes, they actually were at a press conference and they asked Tyson Fury a question. They said, uh, you know, well, they didn't, they said to Wilder, you know, you've had success in rematches before. 
Tyson Fury's never had a rematch, so he doesn't know. And Tyson Fury was like, I have had a rematch before you, bum. I have had a rematch before you, idiot. Like, it pissed Tyson Fury off because it's true. Like, these dudes don't even know what they be talking about. They just be trying to say stuff to big up their king. When he says he's a king, he means he's the king of the LDBC. He means he's the king of the wild debts. To the real world, you are a joke. You are a fraud. But anyways, when Fury switched trainers, um, Deontay Wilder clowned him for it. His team clowned him for it. And then what ended up happening was a different result. And I'll just close with this. He's not learning from his loss. Like every great champion learns from their loss and they come back and they get better. Like even, you don't even have to be a great champion. When I was a kid playing basketball, I could get to the rim, going right, going right. So they made me go left. I couldn't go left. So I started working, working on finishing left, right? So now they make me go right. I finish with the left. Now that I can finish with the left, they play off me. They did me to shoot a jump shot. Now I work on shooting a jump shot, right? And so now they play off me, I hit a jump shot, right? So now they figure out different ways. We double team them. So now they double team me. I keep trying to get through the double team. I keep trying to get through the double team. Sometimes I'm successful, sometimes I'm not. But then I learn if there's two guys on me, one of my guys is open. As soon as they double me, bam, out my hands. As soon as they double me, bam, out my hands and start winning. So I figure out what they're doing to me so I can win. And then the other team has to adjust to how they play me because I become better. But Wilder, you the same cat, you're going to get the same beatings because you are not learning from your loss, period. Let us know how you feel in the comment section. Please like and subscribe and check us out on Instagram and Twitter. Please check us out on Instagram and Twitter and check out our podcast on all major streaming services. We are the Boxing Bros. Oh, Wilder. <laughs>